Good evening. So I wanted to talk to you folks tonight about the Billy Ape and why this is important to Sasquatch researchers and people who are into Bigfoot and uh, why I think it's important and especially how they were uh, seem to have a correlation to our Type 2 Bigfoot, which is the more southern variety, warm weather variety of Bigfoot, also known as a wood booger. Um, these tend to be not quite as big as some of the other varieties of Bigfoot. They seem to be a lot more chimpanzee-like and uh, even exhibiting some kind of chimpanzee behavior, traveling in troops and being a lot more aggressive. But we'll talk about that later on in a video. So the Billy Ape, for those of you who aren't familiar, seems to be, through DNA, they've determined that it is a subspecies of the eastern chimpanzee, which is a subspecies of chimpanzees, um, but they have some very unusual characteristics. And like most cryptid creatures, they were reported for years by the locals, um, especially who would see them and hunt them, uh, that they're broken into a few varieties. And I guess one of the main features is that they are so much bigger, that they are actually human-sized uh, versions of chimpanzees. And if you've seen pictures, there are some pictures we're going to try to show you here, like what you see here. The arms and chest on these guys um, tend to be a lot bigger and broader than the average chimpanzee. Even a full-grown chimpanzee is quite small. I mean, they're incredibly strong for their size, way stronger than a human. Uh, but these things are a lot bigger. They tend to have a lot darker coats. Uh, they're reported to live on the ground where most chimpanzees live up in the trees, uh, which makes these billy apes quite fascinating. And I guess they have a lot more gorilla-like behavior. They're almost, even though they're mostly chimpanzee genetically, they tend to almost be somewhere between like a chimpanzee and like a gorilla, especially in their temperament where they do a lot more false charges and uh, tend to sleep on the ground. And even the locals would talk about, uh, they're found in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is kind of, um, kind of a war-torn place and not a great place for researchers to get to. And there's always a lot of fighting and uh, bad things happen in Africa, uh, which I think this is just one more creature out there that I think needs much more study, much more um, analysis of what they are and documenting their behavior because they are so different than regular chimpanzees in size and temperament. And um, I guess as the males get older in the billy apes, they tend to even have a sagittal crest, which is more like what you see in gorillas and what is also reported in Sasquatch, which is quite interesting. And these guys, like I said, are like a human-sized chimpanzee. They get a lot bigger, very muscular. Uh, they can be more prone to violence. In fact, the locals in the Congo would call them the lion eaters. And I guess they would talk about a couple different types of chimpanzees, the kind of the regular ones that would live up in trees and are easily scared and that they could shoot them with their poison arrows. And then there's, they call those the tree beaters. And then there's the ones that live on the ground, the billy apes, that they call the lion eaters. And they would shoot them with poison arrows and they're ineffective. And they would be bigger, darker, stronger, more menacing. They didn't back down from humans. And to me, it's quite fascinating. And a lot has come out in general in chimpanzees in the last 10 or 15 years. We used to just kind of think that they were, you know, somewhat agitated, somewhat easily agitated, but generally just kind of these peaceful troops of, you know, primates that would travel travel together and they would eat fruits and howl and stuff and sit up in a tree. Well, a lot has come out about chimpanzee behavior in general, about them being a lot more progressive and them actually hunting and eating meat and them, you know, as a group of 20 or 30 of them in a troop going over to another troop and basically their version of like a war and attacks and ambush and uh, young males taking over older males and killing them and eating them and like an trying to take over troops for hunting rights and everything else. And when you talk about the billy ape, that's a lot more scarier um, concept. Because, you know, most of the chimps that you see, like in TV shows and stuff like that, or in movies, they're typically young ones. Once they get, you know, four or five years old and they start reaching adolescence and get a lot more hormones in them, you can't keep them like a pet. They're way stronger than you. They're very smart. And if they decide to turn on you or tear your face off like the one lady who had one as a pet, there's not much you can do. And as you see in the picture here, which is quite fascinating, is that these billy apes are also reported to walk on two legs quite often. I mean, regular chimps do it, but I guess these billy apes do it quite a bit more. 
Uh, I don't know if it's their, the look of their size or some kind of an advantage. And you can see just how big these things are. They look almost like, like, like a human in like a chimpanzee form. So I encourage you guys to go out and do a little more reading on the Billy Ape. We're doing kind of just a 10,000 foot overview. And uh, we'll get to it in a minute why I think this is important. Because most people never heard of the Billy Ape. And it's a classic cryptozoological um, study where the locals talk about something for a long time. Uh, people and researchers who have been in the area talk about it. The hunters talk about these creatures. Um, yet there's no official documentation of them. And, uh, and I think most people, unless you're into primatology, probably never even heard of a Billy Ape. And I know a lot of Bigfoot researchers who haven't. I'm sure a lot of you guys have because my audience is pretty well educated on this stuff. But when you take a look at the size of these creatures, you look at their hands, you look at their legs, like here's a really good picture of one right here. And you look at their chest and the muscles on these guys. I mean, most chimpanzees are usually pretty strong, but you don't really ever consider them muscly. You think of a gorilla as being muscly, but you look at how long and tall these things are for a chimpanzee. You look at the, uh, you look at the, the thickness of the arms, the chest, and then when you look into their eyes, you see their intelligence, you see the teeth on these things, and they're, they're actually kind of sinister in a way. Um, and you see kind of the, you see kind of the crest on their head starting to round over, and you just think that these guys are pretty much open for business. And uh, when we, like I said, when we talk about the brutality of chimpanzee culture, here's a picture of some regular chimpanzees. And they're definitely, you know, they're still big and muscular, but they just don't have the size of what these uh, Billy apes are reported as. And I would love to know more about these creatures especially how they nest on the ground and not up in trees and how they seem to have like a very much what people report in gorilla, gorilla-like behavior. Uh, you know, nesting on the ground, eating stuff off the ground, bluff charges, some of their calls and the way that they, uh, you know, communicate with each other. Uh, it tends to be a lot more gorilla. So it's almost kind of like somewhere between a chimpanzee and a gorilla, but definitely closer to a chimpanzee. The Billy Ape is very fascinating. And it's one of those creatures where... We know a fair bit about it, but we don't know that much about it. And there's done some DNA studies on them, um, which says they are very close to a chimpanzee. And why I think this is important is what I was talking about earlier is our type 2 Bigfoots, the ones that are all reported across the South, what people refer to as a Bigfoot, the second type of Bigfoot, which has a little more rounded head, tends to be a little more excitable in personality, uh, the ones that'll really slap your house and really throw rocks at you. They don't seem to be in the super cold regions as much as the type ones, the big patty types that tend to look more like a gorilla, fascinating enough. And then the type twos, wood boogers, tend to look like a big overgrown chimpanzee, tend to make a lot more chimp-like noises, uh, tend to be a little more crafty and more aggressive in their personality, uh, and uh, also very ugly, a lot of people report. And... So when we look at a billy ape, I think it's kind of interesting that we seem to have something even bigger than a billy ape down here in the United States. And it just kind of shows that, um, you know, there are things in similar now. This is how Bigfoot's not an ape. They are, uh, uh, you know, they're the Nephilim or there's some kind of genetic modification. Well, you can believe whatever you want about Bigfoot. I just think it's very fascinating that through all the different sub-varieties and types of Bigfoot that people report. Some say, no, this looked just like a gorilla. Some say, no, it looked just like a caveman. Some people say, no, it looked just like a chimpanzee. And other people, like down south in Florida, say it looked like a, it looked like an orangutan. So I definitely think there's something to this, and that's why I think the Billy Ape is important for people to be aware of and to, uh, you know, definitely read about, do some deeper research. Uh, I don't know that how many videos there are on it. I know I did find a few articles. And I think it's just kind of when you're studying Sasquatch, I think it's important to study bears, which are obviously they're not primates, but they're, you know, a large, fairly smart animal uh, that can be omnivorous. I think it's important to study humans. I think it's important to study everything every, you because know, humans being part of the great ape family, uh, you know, study chimpanzees, study bonobos, study mountain gorillas, highland and lowland gorillas, um, all the different types of apes and monkey species, because from what people report with, um, with Sasquatch is a lot of different ape-like behavior. So I think to have, like I've said many times, I'm not a, I'm not college educated. I'm, I'm not a primatologist. I don't have a, uh, 
anthropology degree or anything like that, but to just kind of study the whole mystery and even from uh, even from kind of a layman's point of view and to look back through our fossil record, I think it paints a pretty good picture. Uh, maybe not what they are or where they came from or their whole story, but it gives you a pretty good understanding when you talk about the Sasquatch phenomenon. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. It helps us out. And please hit subscribe. Thank you very much and stay safe in the woods.